Okay, now that we've been through the logic of this for the sample mean, we can go a little bit quicker when we're talking about sample proportions. So we're in 7.2 now. One of the weird things about the way that proportion tests work is the letters that we use. So let's talk about that. To test a population proportion, there are a few things that need to be defined first. Usually, we use Greek letters for parameters and Latin letters for statistics. When talking about proportions, it makes sense to use P for the population proportion. The Greek letter for P is pi, and that's a little too confusing. So instead, we use P for population proportions, and that means that we have to find a different symbol for sample proportions. And the convention that is used is to put a hat on that P to make it a sample statistic. This way, you know that P is the population proportion and P hat is the sample proportion related to it. I'm going to skip straight to the requirements for a one sample proportion test. And the first thing is to state the random variable and parameter in words. So x is the number of successes. Remember that success doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. Successes could be very bad things. It's what you are counting. And p is the proportion of successes. Our second step is to state the null and alternative hypotheses, and of course the level of significance. The null hypothesis is that the population proportion is equal to some p sub 0. Just like mu sub 0 in 7.1, p sub 0 is the hypothetical proportion or the assumed proportion. We get it from government statistics or from the manufacturer's data sheet. Our alternative hypothesis could be one of three things. Either we claim that the true population is less than the population proportion that we've been told. We claim that they're simply not equal, or we claim that the population proportion is greater than what we've been told. And then again, we use our discussion of type 1 and type 2 tests to determine a appropriate value for alpha. The third, and in many ways most important part, is to ensure that our assumptions are met. So just like before, we need to have a random sample or at least a representative sample. Maybe I shouldn't say at least. Better would be a truly representative sample with a sample size of n taken. Now, we need the conditions for a binomial distribution to be satisfied, and there are three of those. There's only two outcomes. That's easy. We can simply define those as success and failure. There's a fixed number of trials. You dealt with that in the previous step by saying that a sample of size n is taken, and the results of one trial don't affect the results of another. There's a third requirement, 3C, requires us to determine the sampling distribution of p hat. And to do that, we need to check that np and nq are both greater than or equal to 5. In other words, there's enough of both results given our sample size and the population proportion that we've been told that we have a big enough sample. This is basically ensuring that n is big enough. Now, remember that Q is simply the complement of P, that is 1 minus P. And if this requirement is met, then the sampling distribution of P hat is well approximated by a normal curve. So that accomplishes the same goal as the third requirement in our previous test for sample means. So our next goal is to find the sample statistic, the test statistic, and the p-value. The sample statistic is simply the sample proportion, that is the number of successes over the number of trials, x divided by n. The test statistic is still a z-value, but we're dividing by the square root of pq over n. And then we'll get our p-value out of our calculator using um, Bell. The conclusion, just like before, if the p-value is less than alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Otherwise, we fail to reject the null hypothesis.
That last step is where you state your conclusion in English. The conclusion for a hypothesis test is that you either have enough evidence to show that H sub A is true, or you do not have enough evidence to show that H sub A is true. We can get this out of a one proportion Z test in our calculator. Okay, now that we have some familiarity about how hypothesis tests work from 7.1, and we've seen what a hypothesis test is composed of in that quick summary of how to perform a hypothesis test for proportions, let's look at a particular example. A concern was raised in Australia that the percentage of deaths in Aboriginal prisoners was higher than the deaths of non-Aboriginal pris prisoners which is about 0.27%. A sample of six years, 1990 to 1995, of data was collected, and it was found that out of 14,495 Aboriginal prisoners, 51 died in custody. Do the data provide enough evidence to show that the proportion of deaths of Aboriginal prisoners is more than 0.27%? Now, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of a distance from things. I mean, certainly as Americans, we know that this is a humongous issue for us as well. But in a little bit more distance, we can kind of take a step back and we can look at this in terms of statistics. And often that's very valuable to talk to people in positions of power, as Florence Nightingale did to uh, create a nursing corps in the British Army. It is important to have statistics. It's very emotionally trying to think about the 51 families left behind by the death of these Aboriginal prisoners. But if we look at this in statistical terms, we can produce evidence that either there is enough evidence to support the claim that the proportion of Aboriginal prisoners who die in custody is more than the proportional of non-Aboriginal pr prisoners. So let's get to it. State the random variable and the parameter in words. So the random variable x is the number of Aboriginal Australians who died in police custody. The parameter p is the proportion of all Aboriginal Australians in custody who died. State the null and alternative hypotheses and the level of significance. The null hypothesis is, well, that proportion among Aboriginal Australians is the same as the proportion for everyone else, 0.27%. The alternative hypothesis, the hypothesis that we're trying to demonstrate, if you look at that proportion, it's a lot more than 0.27%. So our alternative hypothesis is that the true population proportion among Aboriginal prisoners is greater than 0.27%, those who died. The level of significance here, 5%. The next part requires us to check the assumptions for the hypothesis test. The first requirement is that the data is randomly selected or better representative. In this case, however, it appears to be for all prisoners, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal. The only issue is why those six years were chosen. The next requirement is that the test is binomial. The first part of that is that there are two outcomes. The unfortunate outcome of a prisoner dying in custody or not. The next requirement is that they are independent. That is, we assume that one death does not affect the probability of another. In reality, we would hope that these are not independent, that if there is a death in custody, something is done to rectify that so that it doesn't happen again. But we're assuming that these are, in fact, independent. The next is that there's a fixed number of prisoners. That doesn't change. And our last requirement to show that the data is reasonably normally distributed requires us to look at NP and NQ. So here's a re reminder of N, 14,495, and P, the null probability that we're assuming is also true for Aboriginal prisoners. When we multiply N times P, we get 39, which is greater than or equal to 5, so that works. And when we multiply n times q, we get 
14,456, which is also greater than or equal to 5. In other words, our sample is large enough even for that relatively small probability. The next thing that we're going to do is calculate the sample statistic, and that's a simple matter of finding p hat. So p hat is the proportion of Aboriginal Australian prisoners who died in custody. So if we compute that, we can simply take 51 and divide it by the total number of Aboriginal prisoners, 14,495, and we get a sample proportion of 0.352%. So there's our sample statistic. The next question asks us for the test statistic. So we use the formula for that. We just computed p hat. We know that p null is 0 0.0027, and then we divide it by the square root of pq over that total m. So let's put this in our calculators. So we've already got p hat, so I'm just going to press subtract, so it takes that previous number, and I'm going to subtract 0 0.0027. To seven. That's our numerator. Since I'm not using grouping symbols, I'm simply going to enter to force it to compute that difference. Now I'm going to press divide to move to the denominator. I'm then going to open a square root, and inside of that square root, I'm going to enter p again, 0 0.0027. I'm going to multiply that by q. I haven't done this arithmetic ahead of time, so I'm going to do it inside the expression. So I'm going to open parentheses. 1 minus p, point zero zero two seven. You can see that that works out to 0.9973, but I'm working through this entirely within the calculator. So let's close those parentheses around q. We're still in the radical. We're now going to divide by n. 14,495. I'm going to close the parentheses that basically close the radical in the denominator and press enter. And I get a test statistic of 1.8989 and so on. So now I've got the sample statistic and the test statistic. Now I want the p-value, the probability of getting data at least as extreme as the sample. So to do that, I'm going to use a one-proportion z-test. So I'm going to go into statistics, over to tests, and down to a one-proportion z-test. When I see that, I'm going to press enter. And now it asks me what p naught is. So let's go back and remind ourselves of that. p naught is point zero zero two seven. X is the number of Aboriginal prisoners who died in custody, 51. N is the total number of Aboriginal prisoners, 14,495. And then for our alternative hypothesis, we see that we're interested in, or we claim that the proportion for Aboriginal prisoners is greater than 0.0027, which is our p null. So we want to go over to greater than and select that. And now let's calculate this. So this gives us a p value of 0 0.0287. So let's enter that. There's our p value, about 2.8, 2.9%. Now our conclusion is based on comparing that with alpha. Remember we chose alpha to be 5%, so we're going to say that we are going to reject the null hypothesis. Aboriginal prisoners do die at a higher rate than non-Aboriginal Australian prisoners. Let's take one more look at our calculator just to make sure that the data agrees on our calculator with what we were computing. So we've just recopied the p-value, but let's go back and check that this gave us the correct test statistic. So we calculated the test statistic, the z-value, 
1.8989. And notice on your calculator the z value 1.8989. A good check that it's using the data that we expected it to use. And that concludes our look at 7.2, a one proportion z test.